Bell to Bell. Now I know you guys voted for The Rock to be the first wrestler we cover this year, and don't worry, we're going to. While we work on that video though, I wanted to give you something Bell to Bell related to watch. And what do you know? Lars Sullivan was released earlier this month. I got a few requests to cover Mr. Sullivan, so let's do it. Here are the first and last matches of the freak, Lars Sullivan. There actually isn't a whole lot of information on Lars' past. Well, except for that, but we'll get to it later. What is known is that Sullivan grew up in Westminster, Colorado, and was born with agromegaly. This is the same disorder that Big Show, Great Khali, and other WWE giants have, and is what caused Lars Sullivan to have such a massive body. The Freak first put his strength to work on the football field while in high school. Lars enjoyed the sport, but he was most passionate about wrestling. True story, a young Lars Sullivan went to ECW One Night Stand in 2005 instead of going to his girlfriend's birthday. Anyways, Sullivan eventually turned his dream into a reality by joining a wrestling school. In fact, Lars did his first phase of training with Bobby Lashley. This connection went a long way for the Colorado native, as it was Lashley who informed WWE of Lars Sullivan and encouraged them to sign him, and that's what happened. In October of 2014, at 26 years old, Sullivan reported to the WWE Performance Center. For the next few years, Lars would train and work towards making his debut. Finally, after about two and a half years, Sullivan was ready. On April 12th, 2017, we saw The Freak in his first WWE match. In Lars Sullivan's debut, he teamed up with a man named Michael Bliss, and the two took on DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Lars, going under his real name, Dylan Miley, kicked the match off by shaking Ciampa's hand. It was a good show of respect, even if Sullivan held on for a bit too long. Tommaso Ciampa started off by trying to wear Lars Sullivan down with submission holds. Sullivan's strength allowed him to easily manhandle the DIY member, and he eventually used his shoulder to get Ciampa on the mat. Lars then went into showcase mode by lifting Tommaso Ciampa over his head. Johnny Gargano quickly tagged in, which he soon regretted. Lars grabbed Gargano and held him in the air for 20 seconds. After the awesome display of power, Lars Sullivan tagged out and gave Michael Bliz a chance to shine. It turned out to be the wrong move, because Johnny Gargano quickly gained control. Tommaso Ciampa then got back in the match, which was the beginning of the end. Sullivan tried to intervene, but Ciampa caught him with a knee. DIY concluded by hitting their finisher, meeting in the middle, and covering Michael Bliz. After the winners had left, Lars Sullivan was visibly frustrated. He ended up taking his anger out on his tag team partner and left Bliz laid out in the ring. I'm guessing they won't be tagging together again. Despite losing, the focus of this match really was on Lars Sullivan. Neither Gargano nor Ciampa got much offense in, and when they did, it didn't hurt Sullivan. As I mentioned, there were several moments that really helped promote Lars Sullivan's strength. The beatdown at the end was another clear message that WWE was going to be pushing Sullivan. I thought this was a decent and unique debut, since it's not too often that you see a wrestler WWE wants to build up losing their first match. But let's see what happened next in the Freak's career. For the next few months, Lars made a couple of sporadic appearances in NXT. He would always be in tag team matches, where he would lose and attack his tag team partners afterward. In September 2017, Lars Sullivan made his singles debut by beating three men in under a minute and a half. After that, Sullivan would appear on NXT more regularly. He began racking up wins and almost never lost. In 2018, Lars Sullivan's dominance was rewarded by allowing him to participate in a North American Championship match and an NXT title match. On both occasions though, Lars Sullivan was unsuccessful. Later in the year, promos began airing on Raw and SmackDown, hyping his debut on the main roster. Reportedly, Lars Sullivan was going to debut on the January 14th, 2019 episode of Raw. He was planned to attack John Cena, which would lead to a match at WrestleMania 35. However, due to panic attacks, Lars no-showed the event. Instead, the Freak would debut the night after WrestleMania in April 2019. He attacked Kurt Angle, which kicked off a path of destruction on the main roster. Sullivan would continue to appear unannounced and attack fellow wrestlers. Shortly after debuting, the Freak was moved to SmackDown as part of the Superstar Shakeup. On the blue brand, Lars Sullivan feuded with the Lucha House Party. He defeated them via disqualification at Super Showdown and on the following episode of Raw. During his second match with the Lucha House Party, Lars would accidentally injure his knee, resulting in him being sidelined for several months. There's also something else that happened around this time that would define Lars Sullivan's career. 
About a month before the injury, it was revealed that prior to joining WWE, Sullivan had made a number of homophobic, racist, and sexist posts on online forums. In response, WWE fined Lars Sullivan $100,000 and required him to take sensitivity training. Several months later, in December 2019, while Sullivan was still out of action, more news hit. Fans had discovered that Lars had appeared in several homosexual porn films under the name Mitch Bennett. This prompted the WWE star to delete his Twitter account. After being shelved for over a year, it was questionable if the freak would ever return to WWE. We would finally get an answer on October 9th, 2020. Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle had just won a tag team match when suddenly, Lars Sullivan came walking out. Lars destroyed Hardy and Riddle, and even attacked one of their opponents, The Miz. The next week, Sullivan had his first match since returning, where he took on and defeated Jeff Hardy. It seemed like we were witnessing the beginning of the Freak's newest path of destruction, but like before, there was a bump in the road, which turned out to be a brick wall. The week after beating Hardy, Lars Sullivan would have another match on SmackDown, which would also be his last time wrestling in WWE. On October 23rd, 2020, Shorty G, who hadn't been drafted to Raw or SmackDown, was in the ring. To prove he belonged in WWE, Shorty G called out Lars Sullivan. The Freak happily answered the challenge, and the match began. Shorty G tried to get the upper hand early with a crossbody, which Sullivan used to hit a nice fallaway slam. With his opponent now stunned, Lars Sullivan threw Shorty G into the ropes and sent the 5'8 wrestler into the air. Surprisingly, Shorty G still had a fight left. The Olympic wrestler raked the eyes of Lars and fought the freak into the corner. Sullivan wasn't going out that easily, and dodged a rolling kick to regain control. Angrier than before, Sullivan threw Shorty G across the ring and took his head off with a clothesline. The match finally came to an end after Sullivan hit the freak accident and got the three count. There's not a ton to say about this match, other than it fits perfectly with the rest of Lars Sullivan's career. What's interesting is that the focus seemed to be more on the man who lost, Shorty G, rather than Lars. In fact, later in the show, Shorty G would change his name back to Chad Gable. In a way, this seems reminiscent of Lars Sullivan's first match, where even though he lost, the story and the focus was really on him. So in a way, Lars' first match and his last one kind of fit well. After his last match, the freak would still be on TV for the next two weeks, but wouldn't wrestle. Instead, he did sit-down interviews, revealing more of his past. In them, Lars shared that he was bullied as a child. This led him to train and learn how to fight back, eventually turning him into a bully. I bullied the bullies. And that was so much fun, man. Sullivan made his last appearance on the November 6, 2020 episode of SmackDown and disappeared from WWE permanently. Things stayed quiet for a few months until early February of 2021. The site PW Insider revealed that Lars Sullivan had been released back in January from WWE. According to an interview with Fightful Selects, Lars Sullivan told WWE he was done wrestling due to battling crippling anxiety issues. He also took responsibility for his own actions that led to his departure. Not only is Lars Sullivan done with WWE, but likely wrestling in general, so a return of any kind probably won't happen. Sullivan's story is filled with controversy and a ton of what ifs. One question we can answer is what did you think of Lars Sullivan? Let us know in the comments. And speaking of which, be the first person to comment and like this video, and you'll receive a shout out in the next Bell to Bell video. With that, I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.